Now, friends, a few day, uh, months ago, uh, in 22nd May, in Holy Land, Haifa, we were uh, in really part, we participated and we witnessed a magnificent historical period of our faith. It was so touching and special. I really think, I think that it was worth it all our life to just witness this day, whether through direct being there or through uh, media that you saw all over the world. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, it was so overwhelming because you could see the crystallization of the vision of Baha'u'llah right in front of your eyes. This display of 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 this is 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 is
that day my heart was full of anxiety and my brain, I was so concerned with millions of unanswered questions in my mind and the uh, whole uh, nightmare ahead of us. No money, no permissions, no sanctions, no all of these problems and these difficulties. And then we were going to pray and I was explaining the ideas of the different stages of the projects and why we have put different stages based on different problems that is ahead of us. Several, seven major problems that we had and I, we tried to put like walls that you put in front of the runners that the first one is shorter and then bigger and bigger. It's uh, all of these till and we witnessed just a few weeks ago this event. It's really amazing. I can't really, uh, I cannot understand the whole, I can't uh, really uh, think that how all of these things went so fast, so quick, and so really um, uh, excitingly. Um, I had a friend, I have an Israeli architect friend that is helping me as our associate architect with sanction plans and negotiations and government things, permissions. Uh, he participated in this inauguration event, and he told me, one day he told me, Mr. Saba, you know, all of these years I was helping you in all of these projects, and I accompanied you to this meeting, and that meeting, and negotiation, and government, and ministers, and prime ministers. He said, I want you to know not once I believed that what you are talking is going to happen. <laughs> he said, I did it because you, know, you have employed me, or my, I'm consultant, I'm doing but I thought these are very strange things. It's so complicated, so difficult. It's not going to happen. Now, look at this, all is done. And really, it's amazing. This is really, it's impossible for them to understand because, of course, they can't understand it because they don't have the vision of Baha'u'llah that Baha'u'llah has given to us. We are blessed, the only people on earth to have received this vision. And uh, I really think that Baha'u'llah gave us a vision such magnificent, brilliant, colorful vision. But in order that his own hand is very clearly vis uh, visible in this whole uh, event, he chose the most uh, limited, resourceless people like us to do it. And he chose the most difficult place on earth, most complicated place. <laughs> and most difficult period of time, of history, so that everything becomes so special and so unique, and at the same time, we got everything flowing so fast. In fact, I remember once the mayor of Haifa told me that the citizens of Haifa are amazed of the progress of your projects, how these things goes on. Then he said, look at our projects. This is mayor of Haifa, he doesn't need, <laughs> we need his permission for every single thing, but he doesn't need anybody's permission. But really he said, look at these developments. Amazing, the way that it goes. So clear and so... Uh, now, we have had, you know that this situation of Israel and the uh, problems of the country right now, uh, the war situation, the uh, tension of the country, uh, really, we don't have any contractor that is 10 years old in Israel. They get bankrupt. The nightmare of any project those of you who are in building industry, they know that the nightmare of any client, any owner, or any architect or engineer is if a contractor goes bankrupt during the construction period. We had three of them bankrupt at the time of this construction. Because of the, ten, not because of us, because of the situation of the country, because of the difficulties of the country and the uh, economy and labor problem and all the problems that exist. It's very tense, it has never been so tense. We started with, First excavation that we were doing and Gulf War started. Said Baha'u'llah wanted to be visible, very clear, everywhere. So this is uh, happened and all of the, during this, this period, we had to become contractor. We saw no contractor is going to be able to do this job. We divided our personnel to part. We said, you are contractor, we are this, uh, supervisors and we have to think this is the way that we could finish this job. But all of this, Complexity of these buildings, you saw it in details. All of those details, complicated details, of, those are not, uh, you know, uh, plasticine that you move it and like that. Those are all marble and details and curved, everything. This mountain is 45 degrees slope, sometimes 60 degrees a slope. The rocks are fragile and earthquake zone and fault on the area and tremendous difficulty. 
labor problem in Israel. We are working in the country that really uh, everybody is so tough. You know that Israelis are tough in general, but <laughs> Israeli contractors are most difficult one. And this is the most difficult time. So really, it's a nightmare. I, I told to some of our friends that really, it's you know our negotiations and everything should be so it's so delicate, so uh, so uh, really uh, sophisticated. We have to do it in a way that people, uh, you know, that uh, it should be a give and take. You can't just it's with uh, such kind of tension. And we we believe me when we finish the project when we. Con complete the construction of the building of uh, International Teaching Center in a function that we had. Contractors were just, we made a goodbye party for our contractors. One of our contractors said, this is a shock to me. This is the first time in my life we finish a project. We have no claim. There is no dispute. There is no litigation. <laughs> he says, it's amazing. In fact, in fact, you will see in this tape that was prepared, the, the, the movie video called um, Not Even a Lamp, this pr uh, has interviewed with some of those contractors and you can see the feeling of that. But this is, so one way we had all of these difficulties. I talked about difficulties, but I want to talk more about the uh, blessings of Baha'u'llah and the supports and I don't want to call it miracles of Baha'u'llah. Dear Mr. Sample, today very beautifully mentioned that these are not miracles. Uh, we are not talking about miracles. We don't, we Baha'is are not supposed to talk about miracles. But these are very simple things that happen, happens in everyday life of every Baha'i. Everything that we are doing, everything that you are doing in your country, anything that we are doing for the Baha'i faith, we see these miracles every minute. And I have had this blessing to work for 25 years for the House of Justice. And every day, I swear to Baha'u'llah, every day we have witnessed these miracles. And it's so many. And I can talk for five continuous days and give you stories and mention all of those things. And you will be surprised of all of these events. I'll give you just, I want to share a few of these stories with you. Um, first of all, in my opinion, the greatest miracle that has happened throughout these projects. And the greatest proof for all the Baha'is to realize what is the wisdom of the House of Justice and to recognize this infallible institution. It's to think about this idea. I, I have traveled a lot during these periods visiting friends and, and Baha'is all over the world. And quite often I have faced this question that Baha'is, they ask, um, they were thinking that, you know, now at this period, difficulty, economy, and uh, lack of money, and all of those things, and problem in Iran, and uh, cut of all of the resources of the Baha'is in Iran, and contribution from Iran, and all of this, why we have to start all of these projects together? Maybe we could do it one at a time, maybe we could build the terraces first, or ark first, and then terraces, or one after another. Why we have to put it together? Universal House of Justice decided that this should be done together. We, at that time, we didn't know the reason for this. But today, it has become so obvious, friends. It would have been absolutely impossible to build the buildings of the Ark if the buildings of the terraces had not commenced together with it. Because the buildings of the Ark are private buildings for the Baha'is. Why people of Israel, why uh, people of Haifa should disturb their life and go through all of that tension and difficulties and all of that, because Baha'is, they want to build some buildings for themselves and change the town planning, change the roads of the city, change the whole zoning of the city, all of that. Why they should have done it? They would have objected. They would have resisted. We would have had enemies of the faith directly attacking the faith. And we, it would have not been built. Believe me, I swear to Baha'u'llah, we could have not yet, as on today, even today, we could have not commenced one of them because I know what are the problems, what were the problems on the way. But because the terraces are a magnificent garden, it's an open to all the people. The people are welcome to, to that. And it's so visible, and it's so much on the one turn, and it's a green lawn for the city of Haifa. It's a tourist attraction for the city of Haifa. People are interested. They supported it. They came after. Today, every, we said, we told them that, look, all of our this development, one kilometer development is open to public. 
you are welcome to come there. It's all for you. Yeah. Meanwhile, we have built some buildings for our personal <laughs> staff. Is. And this was so clearly understood. I received, I went on behalf of the Baha'i World Center, I went to the House of President to receive an award for, for the, from, the award is called Realizing Dream of Beautiful Israel. Actually, this is the name of the award. I was receiving, pri President of Israel openly said in the meeting, he said all of these years, whenever I flew with helicopter over Haifa, I was amazed. I said, my God, what is happening? The whole mountain is gone. Wait, are, because believe me, when we did the excavation, the mountain was all chalk white. Nothing, a white. And suddenly, all the green, there is nothing. We say, all of this, but then now I realize how beautiful. I'm so happy, we are so obliged. I have to visit myself, all of these things. So really, this, was, this is one for us to realize and appreciate the real wisdom of the Universal House of Justice that is the cause of all our victories. Now, the miracles and, and supports and blessings of Baha'u'llah. He says so clearly to us that all the conquerors on high are standing on the queue waiting to support you, to support us. We, sometimes we think that this is because he was Persian, maybe this is a Tarof. But he's not. <laughs> it's not. It's a statement of fact. Believe me, conquerors on high are waiting on the line to support us. And I want to tell you a few stories. For example, when, when we started, the, when we wanted to, we were going on with the, our town planning scheme. The zoning, the plan, the plan of city of Haifa that has been proposed and uh, approved by the British mandate before establishment of Israel. I said today to our Persian friends that the file that was given to me is older than myself. It was open when I was not born. My beloved guardian, since that time, there has been so much negotiation, discussion. These plans, sit, streets and traffic, everything has been planned and they want to cut the properties to few, several pieces, run new roads, new, this is the plan and from that time and it's approved. And beloved guardian objected to the plans, we have it in the file and they answered and they rejected the objection. They said, sorry, as much as we appreciate and we, uh, uh, um, recognize your uh, situation and your position, but these are requirements of the city, it should be done. Now, House of Justice decides without, nothing has changed, the fines are the same, money does not exist, all of those things are not, House of Justice announced to the high world that the path of the kings and rulers of the world and the buildings of the ark is to commence. As if, as if the Baha'is are the, the, the only con concerned party in whole this affair. Well, what about all of these governments and departments and the people? House of Justice have announced to the world. You didn't know any one of those problems. And we went, I went there and I said, my God, what we are going to do with all of these problems? This is what we have to do. Now, we, the minute we, we propose that we have to change all of these things, we want to cancel the main roads, we want to lower the, the only road that exists by five meters, all of those crazy ideas, we put it on plan, we gave it to, to them. And now, after going through nightmares of negotiation, I can talk to you with 50 stories, beautiful stories about this, these negotiations. But now, after it was approved and it was finished, they are, you are supposed to publish it in Gazette and national newspaper for the public to object. When we did the first time, the first, the, the Mac Gazette, the official Gazette of the government came out. Today, tomorrow, I was informed that the municipality of Haifa received a, an official obje, ob, uh, objection from the main uh, office, main departments of the government of Israel uh, in charge of the properties of Israel, claiming that the main part, the main parcel, the main, one of the main uh, pro parcels that touches all nine terraces above the shrine of the Bab, as well as the building of the center of study of the text and archives extension, belongs to the government and not to the Baha'is. And now the reason is very complicated, I don't want to go to detail, because of the absentee properties, because the owner of the land was a Persian Baha'i with Arabic name, he left Israel at the time of establishment of Israel because at that time Baha'is were asked by the beloved guardian to leave Israel, so at that time he uh, left, and because of that he was considered absentee, 
and the property was taken over by the government. So they, are, they claim that they are the owner of this land. When I got this letter, uh, my friend, the same fellow that said, I never believed in what you said, uh, he told me that you are in serious trouble because this is, this government, this, when the government, you have dispute with the government on ownership, it's a matter that will go to court. And it, it's a matter that will take 15 years. So now, relax. <laughs> you have 15 years time. I said, my God, we have dates, deadlines. I cannot even talk about these things to the House of Justice. How I can go there and say, sorry, your plans. He said, he said, we have to go and meet. We decided, I said, we have to go and meet this department. Who is in charge? They said, there is a lady architect. She is an architect, and she is representative of this, uh, the, the one, the main town planner of the government, and she will be. So I called this lady office, and I tried to get an appointment. And uh, uh, one uh, telephone, two telephone. Today, tomorrow, they said, she's not in, she's not in, she's not in. Then they told me she's out of the country. She will come, God knows, call me later on. Call me later. Finally, they said she will come in 10 days. She will come back. So I said, please give me an appointment, and I got an appointment. Now, after, and after a few days that she had returned, we went with our friend, to, uh, with the same architect friend that I said, to their office uh, to, see, to see them. And... Uh, in fact, uh, there was no, uh, she came to the meeting. She came to the meeting with about four or five lawyers. They sat, all of them very serious gentlemen. They sat there, and I had gone with no one. I knew that n no lawyer can help me in this kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a case. So we just, when I, I went there to see what we, I just wanted to measure the depth of the water, see what, what is our problem. <laughs> She came in and she, said, she sat and she said, first she started, she said, I apologize, I understand it's a long time you are trying to get an appointment from me. I was out of the country and I was traveling and this and that. Then she said, you know, I just, I was in India. And she said, you, you have a beautiful temple there. Have you seen that temple? <laughs> she, uh, she said, oh, I was really impressed, and this and that. She was me. I said, yes, yes, I know that temple. I was there for so many years. And I said, I said, I am the architect of that temple. She said, what, really? I can't. Then she said, oh, I showed her the book, some books that I had in my bag. And I, she said, oh, really? Then she said, well, now she really got uh, confused, and she was slow. <laughs> then she said, uh, what can I do for you? Why you have come here? I said, you have... We are building, uh, we, are, we have designed such kind of project and this and that, and you, your office have objected to these plans and it is received. I wanted to discuss with you and see what, how, I can do this pro how we can solve this problem. She said, are you going to build a beautiful building like that temple here? <laughs> I said, it's going to be more beautiful. I said. <laughs> she said, you know, if you are going to build such a building, we should not stand on your way. Please wait, I will go and talk to our chairman. So she went. For 15 days we sat there and we talked and we joked with these lawyers about the climate weather. <laughs> All of that, she came back. She came back and she said, she said, you know, our chairman agreed that we will remain, remain silent on this case. I said, is there anything I have to do? You want me to? She said, no, we will write a letter to municipality, withdraw our objection. That's it. Next day, municipality received this letter, and all of them were shocked. They said, what happened? How this happened? But friends, you think about it. Who sent this lady <laughs> to, to India among all of these places? <laughs> Just really, why? Why she should go to India? Why? architect of this project and that project should be me. I mean, should have been one because of Why she should have visited the temple? Well, all of these whys makes you crazy if you think too much about it. <laughs> but this is it. Now, another case exactly on this line, I will tell you. We, had, we, we, we wanted now, after our plans are approved, we want to do all of this nightmare. We want to lower the main street of the city. And you don't, know, you don't want to know what is under the street. The street is alive. 
There are hundreds of thousands of telephone lines, cable, uh, electronic, uh, um, fiber optics, electrical lines, uh, sewer lines, water lines, uh, I don't know, you name it. There are many, many. Storm water, drinking water. And all of this should be changed. And you can't disturb the life of the people. You can't cut the water of half of the city and say it should be, you have to build a new system and just switch over. Just one click, you have to go to the new system. This is what you have to do. And it's so crazy. There are so many beautiful stories about this particular project work. But I just, I want to tell you about. Now, when we had a, a consultant, um, in fact, our electrical consultant and this project uh, was our dear Mr. Banani that is here. And she, he was a real uh, source of inspiration and help and support to me all these years. But we had a local uh, electrical consultant that was helping us with this negotiation uh, with, about electrical things and telephone things. Uh, he was with me, he, he came to me and he said, Mr. Sabo, yesterday, everybody knew that in Israel, up to a few um, years ago, maybe less than two years ago, we had monopoly on telephone system. It was only one government organization in charge of telephone. So there is no competition. If they say something, you are stuck with it. And everybody knew, even the, all of the municipality of Haifa and very government, if they have a problem with the telephone department, they know that they are stuck because there is no other option. You have to just listen to what they say. Now this engineer told me that Mr. Sabah went there and I talked to him and uh, this gentleman, this fellow, there, were, there is a manager in this department that everybody knew that he's a very tough guy and no nonsense. You can't argue with him. Just he says something and that's it. Now he said, I went there and this man started shouting at me and he said, are you crazy? What is this? You want, you want to lower, change all of these lines in telephones? They said, forget about it. We, can't, we don't have time to give the people to repair their system and all of that. Now you want me to change the entire city system and all of that? We don't have time, we can't do it. So she said, that too. So I came out, I don't know what to do. There is no way, I'm sorry. This fellow is a very tough guy. There is no bargaining with him. Whatever I tried to say, so he said, I will not go back. <laughs> no use. I said, okay, let's, we go together. I come with you, we go together. He said, you are going to be just insulted and nothing is going to happen. I said, but I don't have any choice. <laughs> I have to go because we can't go to the House of Justice and say, sorry, we cannot do it. <laughs> it's not possible. We have to do it. So he said, okay, you want to be insulted? Let's go. We went to this office of this gentleman. We entered to the office, believe me. First of all, you have you, no appointment. You have to go on the queue, wait. Sometimes, they will, if you are lucky, you will have time, you will go in. So we went and waited and waited, and finally, our time, we went in. We went in, and uh, this uh, uh, gentleman, we went in. My friend started everything. Just I said, good morning, as I said hello and good morning, I came in. He started shouting at the loudest voice that one could hear, you can imagine, to my friend, as I'm not existing. He was talking to this, to my friend in Hebrew, and I could understand, I can't speak Hebrew, but I can understand. Uh, I, I tell to my Israeli friends, if you talk about me, I can understand. So it's, <laughs> because they were talking about me, I could understand. He said, uh, he said, uh, he was telling him that these foreigners, they come to this country, they make our life miserable, they want to change all of these things, and they don't have courtesy even to learn our language. So why he speaks English? Now, the situation was so tense. My friend was black and white and red and was changing, and he was, uh, you know, he was playing with his glasses, and he, and, he, and he was looking at me, telling me that I told you this, this. <laughs> why you came here, and he is shouting and shouting and shouting. Now, I became so, I was really lost. I didn't know what to do. I didn't have anything. And I was thinking, and believe me, I, I didn't think. I, just, I thought, as if somebody put my hand in my pocket, I, the only thing that I had with me was my wallet. And I took my wallet out. I had a small calendar, that um, uh, uh, Baha'i calendar, with picture of the Temple of India in one side. And it just daily, I mean, calendars, Baha'i calendars, I had there. I took this, believe me, later on, I am explaining it the way that I, I didn't know why I took it out. I, I didn't have any plan, but I took, because he was shouting and I was really nervous. <laughs> I'm not used to shout 
to be shouted at, I shout. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, I, um, so he, uh, I took this, uh, this picture out and I just put it on the table like this, very uh, in a nervous way. I put it on the table. He just suddenly stopped, stopped shouting. He looked at that and he said, what is it? Maze? In, in Hebrew he said, Maze, what is this? I told him that I am architect. I travel from one country to another country and I build buildings. I was in India for eight years and I built this building. I have been in this country, that country, and now I am in Israel and I'm building a building. If I wanted to learn language, by now I was a professor in language, but I had not built any building. I just concentrate in what I'm doing. I don't, I can't learn language wherever I go. If I start learning language, this building will take 10 more years. So I have to do it. I have to concentrate on this. He, all in English. I said, quick, like this. He understood very well. He, can, he could understand English very well, but he was just on bad mood. Especially he knew that what we want to ask him. That's a nasty thing we wanted to ask him for changing all of these things. Now, then suddenly he said, do you have poster of this picture? <laughs> the situation changed completely. He said, I said, of course, yes, yes, I have posters, book, everything you want. I, as soon as I go, I go to my office, I can send you. He said, yes, I've seen this in television. I was interested to see. It's very complicated, and this and that. Then he, um, then he said to my friend in Hebrew, that you go, I will think about what you are asking, and I will inform you. We came out. My friend said, how oh, you thought about this? I said, believe me, I didn't think about it. I didn't think. I, I couldn't think. It was just the only thing I had. I said that. He said, he said, that was really very, very clever of you. You did this. Change the situation. I couldn't believe it. Anyhow, we never heard back from this gentleman. He never called us. But in a week time, they started executing our request, our plans, the way that we have They moved. And we had such wonderful relation with this organization. And they support us and helped us throughout these years. And once even Mayor of Haifa told me that I have heard you have a very good influence in our telephone department. <laughs> I didn't tell him which kind of influence we have. Yes. <laughs> so. yes. I had, we had uh, uh, another magnificent uh, memory that I have is from, uh, when I show you this uh, uh, PowerPoints, you will see the, from the time of uh, Abdul Baha, from the time of Beloved Guardian, there was a, a, a property at the foot of our mountain that uh, belonged to an Arab uh, uh, Israeli. And in fact, in an interview with television, uh, with a, a newspaper in Israel, he said, over my dead body, Baha'is will get this land. I'm not going to give this land, and it has been, we have been century here, and this, there, all of those things. And this building was the last wall that I was telling you about, the running, jumping over the walls. This was our last phase, phase seven. We had built all the low terraces below the shrine of the Bab. Two, two terraces, terrace one and two remained because this building is sitting on it right now. And the Baha'is of the wall are going to come at the end of the century, sit there, and, and this building is standing there. Beautiful. And all of our negotiation, Years of negotiation. We have done. We had nightmares with this negotiation, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, really, uh, there was no use. So I remember once uh, at the end of this, it was about just few years ago, before passing of Amatul Baharu Yahanum. She was not. She was. Her health was very weak. But uh, one evening, we. I was at his at her presence, and we had dinner somewhere, and. Uh, I took the opportunity and I told Hanum, I want to request your help and guidance on something. I said, this property, this is the situation with this property, and we have reached to the end of the line. If we do not buy this land in three months and demolish it and do something about it, uh, we will never be able to finish our projects on time because the deadlines are closed and we need at least uh, two, three years for this construction, and it's very complicated, and, and now the deadline. Please pray for us. Khanum was very interested and told me that uh, I didn't know this. This is very serious. How you're going to do it? And uh, then she said, from tonight, I promise you, every night before I go to bed, I'm going to say a prayer for this problem to be resolved. 
In a matter of a month from that day, we, the problem resolved, and we bought that land, we, that, that property, and we, we uh, started immediately demolished the building, and uh, they, we demolished the building in all of these buildings in one day. In fact, in one day, we demolished six buildings in once I remember, I, once Mayor of Haifa told me in a meeting, he said, now we know if you want to demolish something, who we should call? Because, it's, <laughs> because we demolished them so, so fast. And uh, uh, this was really, Khanum had such a uh, really gracious um, uh, uh, attention to the projects. And always, whenever I, met her, she told me that, you know, from window of my bedroom, I'm supervising your work. I see this. And she was so uh, constantly, I received so many beautiful notes, encouraging notes, loving notes from Hanum, often through this project. Beautiful notes, like, for example, the day that we planted two, we had brought, uh, we cultivated two orange trees from the orange tree of the, shr of the house of the Bab, the one that was destroyed. And it was my, I wanted to, to put it right at the, at, the foot, at the first terrace below the Shrine of the Bab. We wanted to put two of these orange trees right in front of the Shrine of the Bab. And uh, so we called it, we, we, lots of difficulties with problems and all of that we brought and we found, and it took so, so many years to develop it, and finally it reached to the height of two of them, beautifully reached to the height of a man. And then we, we moved it to the terrace number nine and we planted there. Now you can see if you come down the Shrine of the Bab on both sides, there are these two orange trees, beautiful, full of fruit and blossom and beautiful. This was, so I sent the note because Hanum was not well those days and uh, I thought it's something that makes her happy. So I sent her a note that Hanum, today this happened and we brought this. She replied immediately, she replied that what could be more, one might say, romantic in true sense of the world, uh, uh, of the world than this, in true sense of the world than this. This is just the sort of things that should happen. This was on July 1998. Uh, it was uh, really, uh, I have so many, we don't have time, otherwise I would have read some other notes of Hanum, which is really beautiful. And in any case, um, we could see the hand of Baha'u'llah in the protection that was all of these years with us on, the shrine, on this whole mountain. Excavation that we did on these buildings and the mountain, it was so dangerous. Several times our contractor wrote to us official letters that I am doing this work but I don't accept responsibility because it's so dangerous. And we were really, you know, all of this mountain, you are, if one uh, stone rolls down, we come right to the street and hit the cars because you have, and we have so many trucks you can see in this film that is made, trucks rolling down, uh, the bulldozers really, the huge monster excavators rolling down because of losing their control over the mountain. It was so difficult. And excavating right two meters to the archives building. You know, you are excavating rock. This building is so fragile, so sensitive. You have to work so carefully. All of these things, but all of these years we received real, all of our contractors talk about it, that we are protected by the shrine because nothing, always we were protected. So many accidents, of course we had tremendous measures, safety measures that we have taken and constantly we were watching and supervising and trying to avoid. But whatever we did, still there were accidents, but always protected and no serious injury, uh, occurred and our contractors were openly talking that this is protection that we have received from Baha'u'llah, from the Shrine of the Bab. In fact, one accident that happened which was amazing and really it's a miracle if I explain to you, there is a video record of that in fact, um, I don't have time to tell you, but uh, I, when I reached to the scene of accident, I saw our own contractor, Israeli contractor, a Jewish engineer, was telling, the same engineer that is interviewed in this film was telling uh, to our, uh, uh, to his friend, to his, the policeman and other Israelis that they were there. He said only the man that could stand in front of 750 bullets and don't get hurt, only he could protect such an accident. This is what he was telling. It's amazing really we had. Also, the, a very beautiful thing that we had was this feeling of uh, the, the spiritual 
the atmosphere of the shrine, the spirit of the work, the spirit of the Baha'is and non-Baha'is that they work here, their devotion and their sincerity toward the project, touch the heart of the contractors. You can see again in this movie, in the interviews that they are doing, what kind of feeling the contractors were talking, whether Jew or Arab, they are interviewed in these different people like that. And they were really always touched and they mentioned these things. I remember as one um, example, um, maybe if you have been pilgrims, I have told these stories to pilgrims. I apologize if you, you hear it for the second time, but it's beautiful. It's a, uh, we had a one for, in one of the Baha'i holidays, it was on Saturday. Saturday is Shabbat in Israel and nobody works. So we, I, I, I had planned to finish one phase of our project and open it to the Baha'i staff because, you know, in, during the Baha'i holidays, Amatul Bahar Uyakhano, members of the House of Justice, and the staff, they, and, and pilgrims that they are there, they come, uh, they walk down uh, uh, from the seat of the House of Justice, the circumambulated shrine. So I thought, during this event, we open one phase of the project, and it will be exciting for, this, uh, for everybody and to see something new. So we work, this was used also as a deadline for our team and the staff to work harder. So they, we put this deadline, and everybody worked very hard to this. Friday afternoon, we finished, we wrap up everything, and went home. So for Saturday, we are prepared. Saturday morning, very early morning, I decided to go to see if everything is all right, and uh, we have not left some bits and pieces or details. And uh, uh, as I uh, entered to the area of the shrine, I saw our Jewish contractor that was you know, just the head of the workers there uh, is uh, standing there on the shrine level. And um, so I was surprised what he's doing during Shabbat. Nobody, nobody, everybody is sleeping this time, early morning. Why he's here? Uh, I went to him and I said, hello, what are you doing here? Surprise, what are you doing during Shabbat? He said all these days when we were working here, I felt extraordinary power. He said, I thought that maybe this is because the power, because of the force that is created by the work. You know that when everybody is running and moving and shouting and serious, uh, there is a force that is created. He said, I thought maybe this is the force that I feel. Maybe. So I decided to come here when nobody is here to see if I can feel the power. And then he said, do you feel it? It was so beautiful because really this is a contractor that doesn't know these kind of things. They don't have, they're working just for, under tough condition for, for work, for money. They don't care if we built a casino or we built a, um, anything else. But really it was not that case. They all felt that way. Now, during the day that we were on this, during the events and the program, when beautiful tablet of Carmel was being uh, with music and was uh, was uh, played, and uh, you could see also then this magnificent tablet of beloved guardian upon the O Queen of Carmel be the purest, the most tender salutation. You know that he was so excited when the shrine was completed, and he uh, wrote this message to the Baha'is of the world, so inspiring, and it was set in music and all of that. It was mentioned. It was so really inspiring. I thought that day. Looking, sitting there and looking at all of these people, masses of humanity, faces of humanity that are sitting there and all the televisions of the world focusing on them and watching them at the foot of the shrine of the Bab and the lights and the play of light, display of light that suddenly, you know, the, 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 the small, uh, like an arrow that hit the shrine and then shrine became uh, bright and then the light moved from the shrine to all the terraces and came down to the people. I, at that moment, I was really thinking and remembering the day of the martyrdom of the Bab in barracks of Tabriz. And I was thinking that, you know, all of those thousands of people sitting and standing on the roof of the barrack, watching this view and the time that beloved Bob stood there and he said to them, you know, that just only Anis standing in front of him, protecting his body with his body, the body of the Bab, with his own uh, body. And uh, at that time, al Bab told them that had you believed in me, every one of you would have followed 
the example of this youth who stood in rank above most of you and would have willingly sacrificed himself in my path. Then he said, the day will come when you will, you will have recognized me, but that day I shall have ceased to be with you. I thought, this is that day. People are sitting, the whole humanity is begging the forgiveness of the Bab. And such magnificent, really, display of this. This is for the first time people of the world, they play the homage that they should have played all of these, the, all of these uh, years. And that day, you know, when the, uh, the bullets were shot and in Tabriz and the uh, smoke uh, um, cleared, that day the, the tremendous dust and the whole the storm started and the whole city was black for so many years. The light really left this world in a way. And really I thought this day with all the lights that comes on this mountain and the flood of lights, the way that Baha'u'llah said, the way that Abdul Baha said, terraces of lights, lights upon lights, tabagat and mena nur, nur and ala nur. Really all of this light, I felt that the light is now returning to this world because the world recognizes that day. I remember that day, all this quotation, this piece of, in fact, I shared it with our friends during that, the same event. I said that I remember this magnificent um, uh, message of the, of the beloved guardian that he wrote with very heavy heart at the, certainly at the event, at the heart of the difficulties that was at that time in the Baha'i world. And then he wrote to the people of the world, he said, O people of the earth, yo know you with absolute certainty. O people of the earth, know you with absolute certainty, and let every wavering and hesitant soul be apprised and take warning. That whatsoever has explicitly been revealed by the all-glorious pen will eventually become clear and evident, even as the sun in its noontide glory. In this snow-white spot and in other lands, the immutable wheel of him who has stretched out the earth and raised up the heavens shall be fulfilled. The cherished desire of longing hearts will emerge from behind a myriad whale into the realm of existence and the highest aspiration of the people of Baha will be fully, perfectly, and conclusively realized. This is that which our Lord has promised us both openly and privily. And indeed, this is a promise that will not prove untrue. Therefore, it beseems you to arise and exclaim, O conquerors of the earth, die in your wrath. Ere long, will the stand, standard of his fate be hoisted in every city, shedding radiance upon all regions. In Persian, I would love to read this because it's so strong. I think our Persian friends should uh, understand it and feel it that way. Ey ahle zamin, be haqq ul yaqin bedani, wa har mutaraddid mutafaqqifi ra agah wa pur intibah gardani, ke an chera qalam ahla tasri farmude کشم <laughs> Now, I want to show you, I check my time. Yes, uh, I want to show you uh, these PowerPoints things. And I want to talk to you about, dear Mr. Amanat spoke in detail about the concept of the design of the ark and everything. And construction of that is too technical. I don't want to talk about the construction and problems of that. I just talked in principle 
about the spirit of those problems, but we should not talk about problems because Baha'u'llah has uh, uh, supported us so much, we should not mention them. So I don't want to talk about it, but I, will, I want to talk to you about concepts of detail and design of the whole terraces, as well as show you the whole complex of the terraces and the ark together so that you see the harmony of that. I have been asked by many of our friends during this period, that what is this inspiration of the design? What is the concept of the design? How you have, what you have thought about that? I would say my, uh, the first really, uh, let us start these um, slides. The remembrance of God and his praise and the glory of God and his splendor rest upon thee, O thou, who are his beauty. I bear witness that the eye of creation had never gazed upon one wrong like thee. Thou wast immersed all the days of thy life beneath an ocean of tribulation. Really, the most inspiring concept of inspiration. I request that all the lights be as dim as possible, even if the light on me could be dim because we can, from now, we focus on this. This is the prison of Maku. You see how, how look at this. Um, you can see this is, this, this is the fort. And you see how it is in this really, cav this part of the mountain is deep into the mountain, carved in. Everywhere it's surrounded by rocks. Beloved Bob himself, in a, in a prayer he wrote, he said, Thou hast watched over me in the heart of this mountain, where I am compassed by mountains on all sides. One hanged above me, other stand on my right and my left, and yet another riseth in front of me. Glory be unto thee. No God is there but thee. How often have I seen rocks from the mountain hurtling down upon me. See, this is the place. So you can now see the rocks, how the rocks would come down from the top. And then he says, I swear by, the glory, by thy glory, to me the prison had proved to be not but the most delightful garden of paradise and had served as the noblest spot in the realm above. So this is really the concept of this mountain turning to a heavenly paradise. This is really the essence of this design. This is the inspiration of the design. That's why I have this picture in my room, in my office, and whenever I look at this, if for every, for one million times, it touches your heart so dearly. You look at this dark and black and white prison. The fourth is when Bob said, I didn't have even one lamp. This is, from inside the prison outside. Everywhere rocks. And Baha'u'llah on the way to this prison, the prison of Akka, when he, you know that he visited, during that period he visited, three occasions visited Haifa, and then in that he really revealed his vision of, of Mount Carmel and what we have now. This is funeral of Abdul Baha. Abdul Baha himself is buried in that shrine. And people of, of Haifa, many of the Arabs, they, can, they call um, shrine of the Bab Qubbatul Abbas. They think this is the shrine of, the, of, the, of Abdul Baha and, and because of that. And then the shrine developed gradually. You can see how this is the shrine of the Bab built by Abdul Baha on this mountain. Look at this mountain now doesn't look like path of the kings of the rulers of the world. This was vision of Abdul Baha. That day, looking at this mountain, he spoke about the, 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 mount, the, the path of the kings and rulers of the world. And Baha'u'llah looking at this mountain, look at, you can see those cypress trees behind the shrine. You can see these cypress trees. This is where Baha'u'llah sat and between those cypress trees. And he um, spoke about uh, the his, this vision that he had about this mountain. And then gradually it changed. You see here it's time of, um, it's 1950s, uh, where uh, beloved guardian started the construction of the um, shrine. You can see this one now is on 1960s when 
the and then later on this is where you can see this building here oh I didn't show you the previous one this is the building I'm talking about it right at the foot of the shrine now this is the path of the kings of the rulers of the world it's really And believe me, friends, I have been blessed. I have accompanied rulers of the world already. We had just in an event recently, we, a few, uh, it's, uh, maybe about a year ago, we had almost 250 of the rulers of the world together. They visited these shrines. And they were so impressed. They were so moved. They said this should be the garden of paradise. Many of the ministers from the Arabian countries participated. Many of the ministers of the Muslim countries participated. And I talked to them about these projects. And I showed them. And I, uh, we accompanied them on these terraces. And hundreds of our volunteers, youth, Baha'is from all over the world, beautiful faces, beautiful uh, uh, dresses with their badges showing from which country they come. They were there to, accompany, to welcome these people. And they were all amazed that uh, these are so many countries of the world, Baha'is are there. I mentioned today that one of the ministers of Africa, um, among our volunteers, found one of his own relatives. <laughs> now, this is the vision of Baha'u'llah, the way that these are those same trees. And this is German colony now restored. And you can see the shrine from the center line here. And uh, I mentioned that how, with the help of the government, we were able to establish the continue, because the path of the kings starts from the sea to the mountain, not just from the Baha'i, and from beginning of the Baha'i property to end of the Baha'i property, the way that Abdul Baha said. And now, with really uh, blessings of Baha'u'llah, with the help of the government, with the money of the government, the entire German colony have been restored to exactly the way that beloved Abdul Baha told us. Now, the concepts of the design, the most, another major inspiration of the design is the architecture of the shrine of the Bab itself. Uh, the, the sh it's such a unique building. It's such a magnificent building. It's a boldest combination of the modern and classic architecture. It's the boldest combination of the architecture of East and the West. Certainly, heaven has uh, been really divinely inspired uh, and directed by beloved guardian, by Mr. Maxwell, and certainly very, very special and very unique. I've seen so many buildings on, in the world, and believe me, friends, I talk as an architect, hardly any building can touch your heart that much. It's so bold, it's so, it's, you can see, the, certainly you can see the arches and windows that they are all very much, maybe Indian architecture, you can see. The dome is European, uh, and the uh, very much maybe uh, Christian. Uh, you can see the, uh, co co the combination of every same bold combination uh, of the east and west uh, has been used in the, uh, the design of the terraces. And um, you can see here how uh, really uh, these things, I will dis uh, the, uh, discuss it uh, when we come to the main, to this subject. But uh, every design, every element, all of these balustrades, these columns, these um, motifs have been designed in a way in harmony with the shrine of the Bab. In a way, it repeats some of the symbols and motifs and ornaments of the shrine of the Bab. But the terraces are supposed to uh, enhance the shrine, provide a setting for the shrine, like a beautiful ring that provides a magnificent setting for a jewel, for a diamond. The shrine is a diamond. And unless a diamond is set, if they give me a piece of diamond, we, I'm not an expert, I will not recognize the difference between a diamond and a gold, uh, and, and, uh, and a piece of glass. But if you set it in a beautiful setting of a beautiful ring, then put it on, on a magnificent box and well-wet cloth and crystal lights on that, then the value of th this uh, uh, diamond will become uh, obvious and visible. This is what we try to do for the shrine. Because of that, the, sh the terraces and the, everything designed here in this mountain is, in a way, is attracting you, directing you toward the shrine, inspiring, uh, 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 
following the same, same patterns. Look at the way that the trees and the buildings are really, you know, they're, they are nature and the architecture are uh, working together. Um, these terraces are a mixture of gardens of east and west. As you walk on these terraces, the fragrance of orange blossom and cypress trees reminds you of the, of the beautiful gardens of Shiraz, the birthplace of the Bab, and the gardens of Iran, the geometry and symmetry of the gardens of ancient gardens of Kashmir, Mughal gardens of Kashmir, and uh, uh, they just, some of these are computer drawings that uh, now I just want to show you how the design and the, the uh, design and actual buildings are, you know, combined. They repeat each other. So between my slides, you will find many computer images that was prepared to show the uh, spirit of that to the House of Justice or to uh, those that they would, uh, the government departments. Gardens of the West, again, you will see, this is a computer, and um, uh, you can see the geometry, the patterns, ornaments, colors, remind you of many of them of, of English gardens, of European gardens, the um, whole um, spirit, uh, colors. All of this is supposed to pay tribute to the shrine of the Bab, uh, and, and in a way prepare you for, prepare a pilgrim for this spiritual encounter, for going to the presence of the Bab. This is from the Tablet of Visitation. Waf then unto me, O oh my God, and my beloved, from the right hand of thy mercy and thy loving kindness, the holy breath of thy favors, that, thy, that they may draw me away from myself and from the world unto the courts of thy nearness and thy presence. This, the function of these terraces is also the same thing to, to, to take you out of yourself, to take the, visit, the pilgrim out of himself, but, and, uh, really open that spiritual feeling, that spiritual uh, uh, spirit that is needed for uh, reaching to the shrine of the Bab. The whole, uh, the whole concept, this concept of patterns and geometry and, and uh, uh, the lights and everything that I'm going to show you, all together they're going to remind, to bring us to this spiritual. Everything is supposed to focus your attention toward the shrine. The, the terraces are like brackets that they, uh, they, they uh, really embrace the shrine. They uh, direct you, the, your eyes to the shrine. All the geometry and patterns are in a way in, in harmony with, in a way they're in agreement with the pilgrim that is going up the shrine. There is no argument. You have to, you, you, uh, you feel that these lines are coming with you. Even the water is, you can count both sides, the water that follows you is counting your steps toward the shrine and then prepares you for reaching to this magnificent spot of the shrine. Lights during the day and the night are major factor of the design. The light during the day here is really emphasized and uh, measured by uh, emerald green uh, alive uh, surfaces, parallel and geometrical surfaces of emerald green like mirrors that they reflect the lights during the day. And in contrast with cold, dark green of cypress trees, and silver, gray, green of uh, olive trees, really, you see the magnificent display of green that is the color of the bob. And the display of colors, this is major to see the, really, the value of colors and brilliance of lights. Uh, the architecture everywhere is, in, in a way, is uh, framing your, uh, your eyes, the light, and uh, uh, emphasize on importance of the light everywhere. 
uh, you see this, I, I was talking about those parallel surfaces that they like mirror, they reflect the green, emerald green uh, uh, light. Uh, like a, um, and uh, at night, the same spirit is reflected with the light again. And light is supposed to, um, uh, to give you that uh, the same feeling, same rhythm, same uh, geometry that uh, is direction toward the shrine. See, everything is just like an arrow toward the shrine. You don't have any choice but to go to the shrine here. Water is a, another important element of this, the behavior of water, the color, the crystal, peaceful song of, of the, the, the music of water attracts the birds, and the birds singing and together with water completely camouflage the, the, the traffic of the city, the noise of the city. This is again a computer design, and this is itself. Uh, There are enormous number of fountains all along, and uh, very complex, com complicated geometry of uh, uh, the water. As you go everywhere you go, uh, water follows you and uh, comes with you, like a river of uh, life coming from the place of lamb, as mentioned in the Bible. Computer images. As you see the channel of water that follows everywhere. You see it's starting from here, have a fountain, you go, then water comes down with you. It goes, it not, counts all the steps and comes to this fountain, and then it goes and continue all around. Although the water is recycled constantly, because we have been very concerned about the water consumption, how to use, how to work on this. It's a beautiful, uh, uh, the, the most uh, sophisticated, ways of water con conservation. Uh, right now, as you know, Israel is in a very major water problem, and um, uh, it, this, this was a subject of lots of discussion in press. And in fact, one of the most important Israeli news press, newspapers, because they wanted, the government, they wanted to cut the water from all the parks and gardens. And one of the newspapers printed a beautiful aerial photograph of the whole terraces and uh, 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 with, with computer graphic, they dried half of it. So that it was, and then they said, do you want this to happen? <laughs> so it was, we didn't do a word, you know, this was just the public, the people like this. It was so very beautiful that computer drawing of, just to see this complex of details and corners of ornaments that you see here, it's uh, very uh, complicated. Again, is computer. This is the central, the main entrance plaza, uh, the fountain. The, this is the computer drawing. Uh, uh, the concept is that the green grass goes into the green water. That this is a granite from India, green granite, deep green. And so the water, the green grass goes to green water, and then it becomes like a mirror reflects the shrine, you can see the shrine in this water, and then uh, this water at the center, it's really uh, like the, the famous uh, gardens of Kashan, uh, you can see this crystal clear water of uh, fountains that uh, it creates, the water creates, when it's so clear and crystal and peaceful, it really adds to that spirit. Colors are major, of course the color is the display of light, so we talked about lights, but still in image, the gardens are designed to have colors every season, a special color. We have purple season, where we have purple um, convolvulus with purple jacaranda trees, and then you have, see the display of purple and matching colors with purple. Yellow season, red season, stone. Um, Stone is a major item, huge kilometers, three, almost three kilometers of only stone for a staircase is, have been carved, worked, almost over a period of really uh, 12 years. This stone has been carved, worked constantly. Tremendous 
a number of details of the stone. You can see here this display of, uh, this is the whole, this is the entrance that you see. This is a promenade belonging to the government. And then from here you enter, you go to a tunnel, and you come out from here. So you cross the street without noticing it. And then you come here, and then you come down, and you go one kilometer to the terraces. And this, this promenade is about one kilometer. Then you go to the terraces, one kilometer. And then you go to German colony, one kilometer. Three kilometer, this uh, walking for visitors and for, for people. Already we have tremendous planning and work on bringing, welcoming the public, because it was a major issue. The public are now coming with organized tours. Non-Baha'i volunteer, uh, sorry, um, the uh, part-time students that they work and they are employed by the Baha'i World Center are trained to brief the people in Hebrew. They welcome them, they brief them, they give them beautiful description of what is the shrine, all of this. They come and they visit in a very organized, disciplined way, and then they go. You can see the detail of uh, ornaments and uh, magnificent views of the terraces to the, to the ark that we never had before. This is the archives. You have, this is a new perspective that we have. This is the entrance to our public information. We have made a beautiful information center under Terrace 11 for the VIPs and non-visitors to come. Details of a stone. Ornaments are another magnificent uh, and we have display of ornaments and gates and time. As uh, I hear, I, my wife is my, has been my main, my right hand and my main partner in designing these ornaments and working together on all of these. We have been uh, all of these years. It is enormous, thousands of drawings. It's uh, the amount of drawings and the details are in a way. But you know, attention to detail and perfection in everything is something that touches the heart of the visitors because they want to know why so much attention to these details. And I talk to our non-Baha'i friends, often I've said to them that, you know, although these this places are attraction to all of the uh, tourists and I'm so, we are so happy that millions of people, thousands of people come. In fact, in one day we had 15 days, 15,000 visitors. But we tell them, I tell them that even if not one would have visited the shrine, Baha'is of the world would have done same amount of work and same sacrifices to have this. Because we do this as a matter of respect to the shrine, not for a tourist attraction. So many gates and ornaments and details. Now you look at the uh, in attention to details. I said, really, um, it's magnificent because attention for us it shows our respect. And I, I tell them that no matter what we have done, we are not at all satisfied. We don't think that, we think we should have done 10 times more, 100 times more. Even if we would have done 100 times more, we Baha'is were not satisfied. We should have done more for this shrine and this magnificent spot on earth. It should be the most beautiful spot on earth. Harmony with the city is a major factor because you are building such a dramatic work at the center of the city you should respect the city. You have to uh, look at the way. That, this is the road. This road is the one that was lowered, you know. It was almost at the level of this bridge, at this bridge. And now it has gone down. And you see the way that gardens are continuing. When you are in the gardens, you don't at all feel that you are crossing the street and all of that. Look at the, the way that the, the uh, same red pattern of the tiles of the roof of the buildings of German colony comes to the terraces and comes to the level of the shrine. These are computer geometry drawings that shows how the, the main concept of the terraces is that terraces are concave. They are inside the mountain. If we would have come, we wanted to build the terraces above the mountain, we would have covered the whole mountain with uh, huge retaining walls and big walls, and it would have taken from beauty, beauty of the shrine. This is a computer drawing of the of the bridge over Abbas Street, and this is the bridge after construction. This is that, see how the street is crossed? People go from here to the shrine and they don't at all feel. Harmony with the mountain is another uh, important thing. This is the fact, this is the way I said, 
you see, look at the minimum walls that are, are, designed, are built. If he wanted to, if he would have built it above the mountain, uh, all of this would have been walls, heavy walls. This is the way that everything you see, it's concave. And uh, the, the steep slopes, think about the maintenance of these. We have, a, we have trained a magnificent team of maintenance during construction, uh, and uh, all of these uh, to, so that they can continue uh, with the work, and uh, there will be continuity. All of this then together is supposed uh, to create this that spiritual gardens, because the House of Justice clearly said in that message that um, the future significance of the terraces is evident from their characterization by Shobi Afendi as the pathway of the kings and rulers of the world. The beauty and magnificence of the gardens and terraces are symbolic of the nature of the transformation which is destined to occur both within the hearts of the world's people and in the physical environment of the planet. This was uh, 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 the message of the House of Justice in 1994. It's not something new. This is the spirit that this, so really this spirit should be conveyed to the people. I told our, in, in our interviews with television to Israel, I told them that in my, if the people that they come to these gardens, after they visit the gardens, they feel the world is a better place. They feel more hopeful. They feel more, they feel this beauty, the way that when you hear a beautiful piece of music, you feel better, you get excited, you want to, Tell to your mother that I love you because your ex your your <laughs> feeling your your excitements have been. Uh, uh, they want me to speak to the microphone. But I want to see the pictures. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the. These are really the main essence is the to have the spiritual gardens. That's why it's important. Um, now here is when uh, in Tablet of Visitation uh, Baha'u'llah is talking about how blessed are those that they circumambulated the shrine and come to pay homage to the shrine. And this is where you see the homage to the shrine and people of the world really. This is where House of Justice talks about the edifices and the terraces are a magnificent, uh, are a manifest expression of the emergence from obscurity of the faith of Baha'u'llah and of the determining role it is ordained to play in the affair of humankind. Now, look at the whole project together, together with the buildings of the ark and the, look at the, um, the dimension of the work that we have done here. At the time of construction, I remember the uh, project manager of the Sears Tower of Chicago visited of uh, our projects. He's a uh, Jew, and he came and to visit Israel, and he came there. After visiting everything, he said, I don't know, it looks to me illogical to start all of these things together, such a tense area, no logistics, I mean, with difficulty in logistics and access and everything. I don't know how, he said, I don't know how you dare to commence all of these together like this work. I didn't tell him that nothing that Baha'is are doing is logical. Think about it. Really, what is more illogical than the unity of mankind? <laughs> so, so. But Baha'is are working on it. They are killing themselves, and they are, they, they are demonstrating right now to the eyes of these people that it is possible. Seat of the House of Justice here now. Look at the quality of the work done in the buildings that we have built here is by comment of most of the visitors that they have seen it, all of them. It's the real, the highest uh, quality that one could achieve. You don't know how many times I have asked our gardeners to remove all the flowers if they were not all in one line with the same distances. I measured if all of them are not same distance and this and or, in order and they show the love of the gardener to who planted. We have removed it. Now that's why you see this order. This. This is really the Baha'i order. Anyhow, thank you so much. That was all.